and across the fence, we go from classic to contemporary with a stop in the avant-garde. It's a new exhibition at the University of Vermont that gives the public a look at the private art collections of UVM alumni. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The fall exhibition at UVM's Fleming Museum features some of the most influential art styles of the last 130 years. What makes the exhibit unique is that the artwork is not normally seen in galleries or museums. That's because the pieces come from the private collections of 20 different UVM alumni. The alums have loaned the art to the museum. Across the fences, Keith Silva spoke with the Fleming Museum director about the unique fall show. Um, it's an exhibition of artwork borrowed from 20 different University of Vermont alumni. These are uh, collections that have been put together over the years by um, UVM alum who all graduated over a period of three different generations and um, you know most of them did not focus on art or art history they just went off and you know had successful careers in a wide range of fields and then had a passion for art and, and collected so um, this was an opportunity for me to you know to see who is collecting what out there and, and um, with their generosity to you know to show a, a two incredible galleries full. Whenever there are, are exhibitions in museums for private collections, it's a rare opportunity and you don't know when, you know, you may never have a chance to see it again. Um, so that's what, you know, was most exciting about this show is to, is to be able to get a peek. Jeannie, one of the pieces here is an Edward Hopper. Could you tell us about yes. that? It is a very unusual hopper. It's from 1939. Um, and it is not his signature style. So when you think of an Edward Hopper, you know, you think of Nighthawks or another um, well-known image where there is one or a few individuals in mean, kind of a desolate setting, <laughs> some amount of tension. And, um, but there's this kind of a sense of, um, you know, of, of loneliness or um, kind of disconnectedness. Well, this is um, a scene called Bridal Path, and it's three well-dressed riders on horseback. Um, entering into a tunnel, there's a, uh, two women and one man, um, a little ambiguous as to what's going on, but um, the thing that is very surprising, and some people will immediately recognize the scene, but they are entering a tunnel at 72nd Street in Central Park, and the building behind them is the Dakota apartment building. And you've got another collection of three different works that are early 20th century. Tell us about these. So um, these are, are they're four works. They're three paintings and a sculpt sculpture by three different artists. Um, Ellie Nadelman, Walt Kuhn, and Wood Gaylor. Um, and they were all working in New York um, early in the 20th century. And they knew each other. They were kind of part of the same social and artistic circles. Um, and all three were very attracted by folk art. Um, they collected it, and um, they were also drawn to, um, in terms of subject matter, they were drawn to performers, to the circus, to um, you know burlesque and, and other forms of popular entertainment. Um, and these are from three different collections. So um, you know to bring these together, it, it forms this beautiful little story. And again, there's a wonderful essay in our catalog by um, our curator, um, Andrea Rosen, and. Um, what she has done is to kind of recreate the the artistic mood and sensibility at the time and you really see these connections very vividly. Um, one other very funny thing about that grouping is in the wood Gaylor. Um, it's a, a depiction of a group of um, women practicing for a performance at the Penguin Club, which was an artist club and social club in New York in the early 20th century. The person who's teaching them or who's leading the rehearsal is Walt Kuhn, who is the artist who painted the two paintings next to that painting. So it's very wonderful. Jeannie, there's two pieces here that are side by side, very close to your heart, a Picasso and a de Kooning. Tell us about yes. those. Um, so those are, are really interesting to see together because both of them depict a group of nude figures. Um, and de Kooning, you know, like every artist of his generation was looking at Picasso. You really couldn't avoid it. Um, and I love how the two relate because they're both um, they're both examples of kind of the, the breakup of the of the figure. Um, and you see in the Picasso this angularity, and it's actually a late print from the 60s that is um, 
looking back to Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, mm -hmm. so you see the, the figures, you'll recognize them. Um, but the, you know, the figures are breaking up, and they're, they're these kind of angles that are not, uh, you know, not consummated. And, and then you look at the de Kooning, and the same thing is happening, but it's very, um, it's very fluid. It's very curvilinear, and it's a whole different, um, different sensibility. But he then took that to the next step that Picasso never did, which was complete abstraction. Although you can generally see aspects of the figure in de Kooning even so. There's a couple examples of photorealism here. What are we looking at? There are two works from the same collection. Um, one of them is from 1983 and the other is um, from 2006. The earlier one is Richard Estes, which some people may recognize as one of the, the founders of the, of the photorealist movement. Um, so these were works that, that you, from, a, from you know, standing in front of them, you cannot tell that they're not photographs. They're, it's a painting, and it's a painting of a street corner in Manhattan, but it looks for all the world like a photograph, beautifully done. The later piece is by an artist named Rebecca Morales, and um, it, is, um, it depicts uh, grass and moss in, kind of interwoven with these areas of um, what looks like crocheted, yellow crocheted objects. Um, and it's on vellum, which is a thick um, surface to paint on. And what's happened is that the water in the painting mediums has caused the vellum to ripple. It, the whole thing becomes very organic. You walk up to it, you think it's growing. So it is photorealist in a very different way. It looks completely organic. And I looked at it and thought, oh my god, is there mold on that? <laughs> Which there isn't. <laughs> People may not know the name John Killick, but they've certainly seen his movies. And you've got a fairly substantial part of his collection here. Tell us about those. Yes, we do. Um, and John's collection focuses on a, a very narrow and vibrant part of the art world which is um, New York in the late 70s and early 80s, which interestingly is when he was coming up as a, film, a filmmaker. Um, so John is a very renowned film producer at this point, um, but when he was just starting out, there was a group of artists, a really vital art scene in New York that included, Andy Warhol was one of the elders, um, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Julian Schnabel. They all worked very closely together, and they were working you know, in the, in the uh, heat of the AIDS epidemic, and um, it's very, very intense artwork. And so Julian Schnabel helped Killer to put this collection together later. Um, but it really reflects the time in which he was, you know, he had just hit the streets of New York with his creativity as well. And you've got a piece in here that is going to be a future gift for UVM. Tell us about that. Um, in in Killick's collection, it is a very early Warhol drawing, and it is a, a 1956 drawing of a young man, um, ballpoint pen on paper. It's an absolutely beautiful drawing, and it's not what you think of when you you know when you think of Andy Warhol. But um, at this point, we have a really solid collection of Warhols, um, and this is by far the earliest. So we're thrilled. It's it's a promise gift. It will come to us at some point far in the future. And is that something that people UVM alumni can think about? Absolutely, um, and you know we've been we we um, have recently, as of last year, um, Brooks Buxton, who is the chair of the Fleming Board, has promised his entire collection to the Fleming, his art collection, which is really wonderful. Um, and there's um, there's another piece in this exhibition, actually, um, contemporary piece by J. Henry Fair, that's also been promised. So yes, and and not just UVM alum, but you know, but others as well. Um, it is a really generous way to give, you know, to give to a museum where you don't have to part with the work. <laughs> um, you just write it into, into your bequest. Right, yeah. Right. Collecting isn't just about having a lot, a lot of money. Anyone can be a collector. That's absolutely right. And some, of, some very important collections have been put together by people very early in their lives where you know, they bought works on paper by unknown artists and they had a very good eye you know, or a good consultant. Um, and you know, and purchase work, and you know, and they weren't buying for investment purposes. They were buying because they loved the work. And in most cases, those artists went on to become you know very important American artists. Um, so yeah, it's it's absolutely not um, you know not critical to have a lot of money. Um, you know, as long as you know what you like and what appeals to you, and and know where to look for it. Well, Janie Cohen is with me now, and I think what strikes me about that collection is that they're so different, but yet they all seem to have a theme. 
Yeah, I was um, really amazed when I, you know, when I began to curate it. So to, you know, figure out what what made sense, um, you know, to bring out of everything that I was looking at. There were so many. Um, connections among the works and really interesting resonances and you know and groups of work that um, you know that kind of spoke to each other mm -hmm. so um, I was delighted when you know we laid everything out and I walked into the gallery and realized it was really cohesive it was a thrill now was it difficult for some people to sort of loan you <laughs> these these Artworks. You know, the generosity was just overwhelming. Everybody was absolutely um, on board with it from really from the beginning. Um, you know, I got some teasing and some needling, and you know, one of our, one of the collectors said, um, "You've denuded my living room." <laughs> <laughs> Now, were these local people? How far away did you have um, to ship these so things from, in? So from from um, Burlington to the New York area um, to Madison, Wisconsin, actually, is where mm -hmm. the furthest came from, yeah. But mostly the East Coast. So now we've talked about this collection, but what else is going on at the museum that you want to talk about to let folks know? Uh, we have some really um, big things happening um, in preparation for the spring. So we are currently installing a new gallery of Asian art for the museum in our Wilbur Room, which I think a lot of people are familiar with when you walk into the museum. It's the beautiful library-like room. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we are what we're doing is installing um, a uh, really terrific collection of works kind of across Asia um, from the collection. That is the part of the Fleming's collection that has grown the most in recent years, thanks to the, again, the generosity of, of our donors, alum and, and uh, Vermonters. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at the same time, we're working with an artist by the name of Katherine Jansen, who lives in the Philadelphia area, who's been photographing in India for the past 25 or 30 years, and they are spectacular panoramic photographs um, taken in places where most people don't have access to. They're really beautiful. How do you decide what to put out there? <laughs> Um, in general, the, the exhibition schedule is organized um, by my curatorial team, um, which is me and our curator of collections and exhibitions, Andrea Rosen, and our um, manager of collections and exhibitions, our curator of education, and our exhibition designer and preparator. <coughs> Excuse me. So <coughs> the curator and I will, <coughs> will sit down once a year <coughs> and I'm sorry, not once a year. We sit down weekly, but we really look at the exhibition schedule um, on a yearly basis, trying to get a balance between um, what we feel are all of our responsibilities to the public and to the university. And so this current exhibition that we've been talking about, um, what's been the reaction? From folks. It's been really exciting. Um, the numbers of people coming in are um, are very very strong, and that's always exciting to us. And I think because there are um, familiar artist names in the show, it's also such a um, a broad reach from impressionism to contemporary work. Um, there's really something for almost everybody in it. Um, and uh, you know, we we try to strike a balance as we go, you know, through the academic year um, in showing historical and contemporary and kind of um, academic and more popular shows and things from our collection versus things that we bring in. So I think this one, this is a, so far, has been really popular, and I think it's going to continue. That's wonderful. Well, the exhibition of University of Vermont Alumni Collections runs through December 16th. To find out about the museum's hours as well as admission and tours, check the Fleming Museum website or call the museum at 802-656-2090. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.